Well, we moved into our house here approximately 12 months ago, and I thought I'd make a little video showing the various types of lighting that we've used and the reason for doing it. The main object is energy efficiency, and I've extensively used LED lighting. A couple of compact fluorescents and a couple of standard fluorescent strips. So come with me and um, I'll show what we've done and why. Well I thought we'd make a start in the um, bathroom or the ensuite if you prefer. Um, in here I use one of the few fluorescent fittings. Now the reason for using this is because and it's also placed over the mirror. So many people I find have the lights behind them and so when they're standing in front of the mirror they can't actually see themselves because they're in shadow. Also I find a lot of people use awful halogens which are hot on the back of your neck at a very poor efficiency and give a really quite poor light. Now normally I'm not a great lover of fluorescence um, but this type has a solid state um, striker unit insofar as um, it comes on instantly. If I turn it on you'll see. No, I'll now turn the right one on. <laughs> if I turn it on you'll see it comes on instantly and 99% of its full brightness. There's no flickering or um, whistles or flickers or anything like that. Now the reason I'm showing you a photograph of the uh, toilet um, is purely to show the colour rendition in here. Now that's using, I've got two 12 watt LEDs in the ceiling here which is lighting the room up and uh, if I pan up again it's difficult to show because um, it just makes the camera shut down but we'll have a go. That's one of the two LEDs. Now if you look at the colour rendition at the moment that's just that's daylight by the way um, as opposed to warm white. In the bathroom I would always choose daylight because it gives you a very accurate colour rendition. Now if I turn the light on over the mirror which is a slightly warmer daylight if that makes sense being fluorescent I'll turn the light on now and you'll see the, the difference it warms the color very slightly in actual fact it just really fills in the color because if I pan up onto the light it's almost looking at the two together it's a slightly creamier light but the two combinations together make for a very nice light in the bathroom and efficiency. This tube here on the uh, fluorescent is actually about, um, I think it's 18 watts from memory. Um, so it actually uses more power than the two LEDs. But um, I haven't found a, a, a very good LED light to go over this area. So that's the reason I use that. Now we're in one of the bedrooms now and in this room I'm using compact fluorescents in here. They are 20 watts a piece and is probably the least energy efficient room there is. Obviously there's 60 watts there because there's three of them and they are warm white. If I turn them on. Now compact fluorescents aren't all created equal. There are some really really crap ones out there. Uh, these ones are fairly good insofar as they reach their nominal brightness very quickly and even when they first come on um, they produce a good level of, of, of light. Whereas so many that I've seen and actually owned you can actually go and have your shower by the time the lights come on to full brightness so my advice would be if you're using compact fluorescents go to a shop where they'll let you plug it in before you buy it and if they take two or three minutes to come on just avoid them because they'll make your life a misery. They're not suitable for 
small rooms where you just go in there for two or three seconds uh, because by the time the light gets to its full brightness you'll be gone. Now we're in the walk-in wardrobe and uh, you can see all my quality designer clothing here. Uh, yes, we won't comment about that. But the light, this room has no natural light at all. So if I turn the lights off, the light is purely coming from, from the entrance to the room itself. Poor camera, it doesn't like that at all. Now these are daylight LEDs and I've got two in this room, in the ceiling. Daylight because in, when you're choosing your clothes, you want natural light. You don't want it coloured in any way. These ones are actually seven watts a piece. Well, we've made a slight detour into the garage where you'd think the lighting wouldn't be very critical. But um, this room is about 18 foot square. But here I've got four LEDs in the ceiling. Now, ideally these should be daylight as well. I hadn't got enough of them, so these are actually warm white and acceptable. Now, the only other one I've got in the ceiling is this. Now this was originally a standard fluorescent fitting, but it was so awful it took the light about five attempts to strike, even though it was brand new, because it was the standard starter and ballast type. And the tube used to flicker and the, the, the ballast used to hum. So basically, not really any good. So what I've done, I've taken out all the insides and I've put in strips of LEDs. It comes on instantly. It's run by a 12 volt uh, laptop power supply and it's daylight again. And that's right over my uh, workbench where I do all my messing about. Very pleased with that. So my advice is never, never buy fluorescent fittings that have starters and ballasts because you will regret it. The only thing in their favour is they're quite cheap but you only put light fittings up once so why buy cheap when for a few more pennies you can buy better. Now just stepping out of the garage I thought I'd show you some external lighting that I've put up. Now this is a 20 watt LED. It's equivalent to about a hundred or 150 watt halogen. And the difference is, I say it uses 20 watts. This one is actually warm white because in New Zealand they're actually quite hard to get these in daylight. But we'll pop out later on when it's dark and it is a really, it just beams with light. And so pleased with these. I've got something very similar on the front. These are the two on the front, which is basically the same 20 watt, except it's got a. Um, detector on the bottom there and it's set up so of course it won't come on during the day but at night any movement you're driving the car up to the garage on they will come again really nice and certainly the best don't even consider buying the ones that have got halogen lamps in because the lamps get really hot it burns all the paint on it then they all fall apart with rust two of them that's 300 watts burning away when here I've got a total of 40 watts and better light it's a non-starter now this is a hallway that stretches from one part of the house to the other and again I'm using LED lights and these are the same ones as I've used in the walk-in wardrobe they're seven watts a piece and I've got five of them spread down the corridor Again, daylight, perfect. Now this is the um, hallway where the front door is. And I've just got this little table lamp here. And there's a little six watt cob LED. I'll take it out and show you in more detail in a minute. So I turn that on. You can hardly see it because there's so much light coming in from outside. It's such a sunny day that I, I doubt you can even see that. But at night, that really shines out brightly. Right, well I've just removed the lamp from there and this is it. Now, I can't really recommend these to be honest because they're lethal. The LEDs, there are the connections. There's no real isolation between 
the internal circuitry and the mains. So if it's switched on and you happen to grab hold of it, you could be getting a lethal electric shock. But saying that, if you can use it in a position where it's enclosed in a fitting and there's no kids around or anything like that, the light from these is absolutely superb. This, which looks like a radio valve of many years ago, is the same thing virtually, except it has a plastic case around it. So there's no safety issues with it. This one also has the advantage that there are LEDs in the top as opposed to this one. So the light that comes from it, if you compare the two, is not such a pinpoint as this one. So this one recommended safe and excellent light. Now I'm going to show you the chandelier I have in the moment. Now normally people would use filament bowls with these. Well, uh, it's against my religion to have anything with a filament in it. So you, you won't find a single bulb in this house that has a filament in it. Now this one is a candle LED and it's 4 watts and I'm not quite sure how they get 4 watts when there's 3 1 watt diodes in there but I think it's nearer 3 watts. These are very daylight and looking back a mistake for the lounge. When we bought these there wasn't that much choice. This was the alternative which is a compact fluorescent but these take so long to come on which I'll demonstrate in a minute. These are under the Woolworths Essential brand. Not recommended but these are warm. I think these are warm white. These are 7 watts so they use double the power of the equivalent an LED. I'll plug this in now and switch on. This is the compact fluorescent that I've just put in and the others are all LEDs so when I switch the power on you see what I mean? It actually lit about two seconds after the other ones. It's a warm white as you can hopefully see but it's still warming up whereas the LEDs are full brightness instantly. Now when you consider that that's 7 watts and the others are, we'll call it 3 because I'm sure 4 is not correct. But I would like to have got warm white LEDs and I'm on the lookout for some now. And you can't seem to get any brighter ones than that. I think it's largely because of the heat sinking. Now because of the size of the, these things, this is actually um, a miniature uh, bayonet. And this is metal and is the heat sink. And after it's been on a while, they do actually get quite hot. So clearly they couldn't really be more powerful because um, you'd end up with so much heat sink there wouldn't be any room for the actual lighting. So that's probably why you don't see any brighter ones. Right, now this is an important room. This is the kitchen and the three lights that I have up there are also compact fluorescents and they are 20 watts a piece daylight. But they are some of the good guys they come on instantly. I think I shall eventually replace those with LEDs. The only downside is the 60 watts there. The equivalent LEDs will probably be about 10 watts a piece, so we'd save 50% of power. Now you may think I've gone LED mad, which I have been accused of before, but this is the hood over the cooker. And believe it or not, I've got LEDs in there as well. Beautiful lights. They're only one watt, but they're daylight. And if I pan down onto the cooker, if I turn them off, that's just, bear in mind I've got all the curtains pulled in here because <laughs> I've just got so much light, it's ridiculous. So you can see it doesn't flood the place or anything, but it's the same color as outside. And the only downside of this is I forget to turn them off because I turn them on when I'm cooking and because the light colour is the same as outside I come back several hours later and they're still on because you don't notice it because it just blends in with the natural light which of course is perfect for cooking. I don't feel too bad about it though because one watt a piece 
Um, when you think the equivalent halogens that most of these things have are usually 20 watts a piece. So I've got 2 watts versus 40 watts and the light is better and when you're standing under it it doesn't cook the top of your head because the heat from it is negligible. If I actually touch the bulb, uh, which you can't see because I haven't got the camera. <laughs> oh, if only I was a professional. Um, there's just no heat from those whatsoever. Well, I won't show you the, the rest of the ceiling lights in here because they're just the same as the ones in the bedroom. They're warm white and I've used the warm white over the dining room table and over in our sitting area. The kitchen area along with these lights here which I've already showed you are also daylight and it just gives a beautiful and low cost environment for working. Right we're in the pantry now and here we've got a combination of fluorescent and LEDs or LED I should say. Uh, the fluorescent is um, electronic ballast so it comes on instantly and doesn't flicker or anything like that um, and gives a very nice well distributed light but right over the sink I've got one daylight LED. Now the only slight snag for some reason or other all LEDs that I've encountered so far have a slight delay of between half a second and one second and doesn't seem to matter what you pay for them they all seem to have this but because I've got fluorescent and LED here when I turn it on you'll see the fluorescent comes on noticeably before the LED isn't that weird I mean it's not an issue it's not something we notice or comment on but again the fluorescent has a slightly warmer light than the daylight although they're both classed as daylight the actual color temperature is slightly warmer on the fluorescent or in this case it is anyway now this is one of the um, LEDs that I've been using this particular one is made by Philips and the only reason I'm showing it to you is to give you some tips on how to buy these things this particular one is actually discontinued already because as you probably know already in the world in electronics very few products last more than six months and the same thing applies but the basic rules are the same this particular one is an 18 watt now when you look at this you'll see this obviously sits into the roof um, there is no gaps around here so you're not going to get any cold drafts coming down in the gaps so make sure when you buy these things it is that type. This is the heat sink and you can see it's quite a fair size. That top part is the connections and this is the actual heat sink and in use it gets warm. It doesn't get hot but certainly in New Zealand you can take your insulation up to this but you mustn't cover it. I'm sure the rules in the other countries could differ from that. This just comes off and there are the connections. Now these are the other type of fittings. These are quite cheap and each of those dots is a diode and so this particular fitting is a 5 watt. Now these, again the heat sink is on the back but they're not completely insulated from the um, roof so you can see there is a slight gap there that um, you can get small drafts and um, animals and things coming through but these are probably one of the cheapest sort you can get. The driver in the other one, in the Philips, is included but this one has a separate driver and again there's just a small fly lead comes out into the fitting and mains go in here. It just means that the basic lamp is smaller although not much and it does have the advantage should the driver fail you can actually re uh, replace the driver because in my experience of these the diodes are generally fairly reliable but the drivers can be a problem sometimes and if that fails replace the driver but in the Philips 
you just throw the whole thing away. You'll see the light is quite evenly distributed all the way down because the compact fluorescent is, well, compact fluorescent shape, whereas this, in comparison, you'd find the light, there would be a line around here. That would be light and that would be dark and it looks really horrible. So don't buy these sort for this application. You'll save power, but it looks like Right, there's only one more thing to show you before we go outside tonight and have a look at those spotlights. What you're looking at there, right at the top here, is an LED, of course, but it's blue. And it's just designed to light that area. And it does that, but as I say, it's now midday in the afternoon. There's a lot of light in here. And I've tried photographing this at night, but because they're so intense and so blue, it upsets the camera and all you get is an out of focus blur. But I'm sure you get the idea. It does look kind of nice. It's only three watts, but um, when you're sitting watching TV, perfect. This is the uh, rear of the house and I've got these small fittings on the back wall. And this one has the cob LEDs that I showed you previously. Now the main advantage of these is of course 10 watts and it illuminates the area absolutely perfectly. Now previously I actually had compact fluorescence out here but in the winter one of the properties of the compact fluorescent is they don't like um, cold temperatures, operating temperatures. So sometimes you turn it on in winter and they'd only just be glowing, absolutely useless. But the LEDs, of course, don't mind whatever the temperature is, hot, cold, rain, wind and showers, they're quite happy. So that's why I've chosen LEDs outside. Now, just as a comparison, I've popped in a compact fluorescent on the right hand side and that's a 22 watt as opposed to the 10 watt, 9 watts to be precise, on the LED on the left hand side. It gives you some idea. You, compact fluorescent is a little warmer, but it gives almost the same light as the LED for half the power consumption. I thought I'd just show you how this looks at night when it's all artificial light. And these, this is the kitchen area, and you can quite clearly see the light is daylight. You know, beautifully clean and, and crisp. So about the creaking. Now, when we go further round, you'll see the light changes. It's, it's more diverse on the camera than it is in real life, actually. But that takes us quite plainly to the dining room, which has warm white. Exactly the same power LEDs, but warm white as opposed to the daylight in the kitchen area. Well, it's half past nine now and uh, quite towards the dusk. Again, the camera's compensating for the lack of light, but it's relatively dark out here now. There we go, let's put the light on now. Look at that. <laughs> that really belts out the light, doesn't it? It's quite amazing, and the, the distance it goes, it's all lit up. We're at the very front now on the driveway. If I'm going to wave my arms about in a second in front of the spotlights, we'll see the difference that makes. As I said before, it does, the camera does um, compensate somewhat, and it's actually reasonably dark out here, but it does look fairly bright, so I'm now going to wave my arms around in front of the PIRs and uh, get them on. That's one on. And there's the other one. So here I am illuminated for all to see. Sorry about the shorts and the legs but it's still quite warm out here. <laughs> That's a shot of them both on to... Oh. <laughs> That's the shot of one of them on still.
Well, this is our last remaining shot. This is the um, porchway. And if I do this, that's the outside again. LEDs, there's four 7 watt. And again, four 7 watts in here. Thank you for watching. Good night.